Hello. Seth. Hey, Mary. Where are you? Um, I'm in San Francisco. You give me these random hotel phone numbers, and you're like, ask for this in this room, and I don't know what's going on. Ask for Steve Majenskin. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't really tell you why I'm here. Um, just, it's safe to say that the entire galaxy hangs in the balance. Oh my god. <laughs> my hero. Yeah, well, I, I can take time out to record the podcast. Oh, you're so generous. <laughs> Seth, I'm so glad you're on our side and not on the intergalactic um, warlord side. <laughs> Jeez, Barry, come on. <laughs> So um so how was Degrassi this week? It was it was good. I hope you got to see some of it. It was the one where um Spinner's going through chemo, which looks like not a fun thing to do while you're going through high school at the same time. Yeah, I mean if there's one thing Degrassi's taught me and it's taught me a lot, <laughs> it's that I'm really, really glad I've not had cancer. Oh man, for real. Yeah, I'm I'm putting gratitude that I've never had cancer in my gratitude book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a smart move. And it's so sad, like, how he, you know, because at first I was just like, why don't you get off of school for chemo? Like, I would think that that qualifies, you know, if you can get off right. for having a cold, I think you'd be able to skip a little school for chemo. But it, it's like his decision. Like, he, he wants to graduate right now, and he wants to keep living his life. I can totally sympathize with that. Yeah, he's really trying, and I don't know, it's just so hard because any sort of major life upheaval like that, whether it's an illness or anything, just, like, has the potential just to destroy your relationship with, relationships with other people. Yeah. Because, you know, you rightly so become sort of very self-absorbed, which is not, I'm not saying that's wrong, because obviously that's going to happen, and it's just very hard to sort of, like... <sighs> I know that it becomes like you, you feel like other people don't understand how you feel. And that, yeah, it must yeah. be really alienating. I mean, like, at least that's the good thing about sort of the modern world is that you can probably find support groups and especially like online. I'm sure there's support where you can kind of talk to other people who, who do know what you're going through. You know, like everybody has different sets of friends and you can probably have your like your chemo friends and your regular friends that go to school with you and. At least there are ways to, to get through it today. Right. And I think what happens is that, like, the people who really – and obviously this isn't true for everybody – but the people who really care about you, you know, can see this happening to you and can sort of see you falling into this pit, and they want to help you out of it. But for a lot of people, that's not what they want. They don't want to be helped out of it. They want to sort of wallow in it. And then so when someone comes along, like – in Spinner's case, Darcy comes along and is like, "Hey, I want to wallow in it with you." Yeah. You're like, "Yeah, right on." And then you're, um, then you start alienating the people that that really care about you. Not that Darcy doesn't care about them, but right, right. Yeah. But yeah, it must be really easy to get dragged down into the pit of despair. That's why we all need a Jane. We do. I love Jane. I'm so glad she's on Degrassi. Is it the eyeliner? Is that why you love her? I, it might kind of be like it's. You know what it is? It's that she's. Ellie, but she's not going to turn into Stacey Farber. <laughs> she's Ellie and she's going to stay Ellie. I love Stacey. You know I love Stacey Farber. I'm just saying that, like, Ellie was, like, not a natural fit for Stacey, I guess. And, like, that, you know, they, they turned her into, like, more like a very fashionable. She's still Ellie at heart. Oh, God, I'm getting myself into trouble here. No, I understand. No, Ellie, but it's because Ellie kind of grew up. Ellie, you know, she yeah. went to college and she, you know, she, she, she grew out of the person she was trying to be in part because of her home life. But I think it's also that Jane is sort of like Ellie without uh, the baggage. Yeah, maybe that's a... Well, we don't know. Maybe she does have baggage. Well, we don't know. That's true. Everybody there... I don't think there's been a baggageless person on the grass yet. <laughs> but she hasn't had the baggage yet, at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Maybe maybe we'll get to learn about her baggage. I hope we get to learn about her baggage. <laughs> Tell us about your that baggage, that would mean, Jane. like, the Jane episode, which I very much look forward to. We should start doing another podcast and just call it Tell Us About Your Baggage. <laughs> So, tell me about your baggage. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're, you're uh, phoning um, Paula Brancati, oh, who is Jane. Oh, you're not going to phone is... with me? <laughs> well, I, I can't do it because I'm on this uh, special hotel phone. And I do oh, that. man. All right, yeah. I will call the Paula Brancati, who I'm very excited to talk to. And you will at least stay on the line with me and talk to her with me, won't you? Yes. All right, awesome. 
Hello. Hello. Is this Paula Brancati? Yes, this is Paula. Hi, this is Mary and Seth from the com. Hi, Hi, guys. How's it going? It's going awesome. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, you have one of those names where I just I always want to say the whole name because you're like the whole name. name? Is so I awesome. have friends who are like that as well. <laughs> really? Yeah, I totally know what you mean. Right. I'm glad like I can Charlie be one of those people for you. Like Charlie Brown, sure. <laughs> it also kind of it sounds like a um, motorcycle. I guess I'm thinking of Ducati. Oh, just... that's really cool. I'd love to be a motorcycle. <laughs> Man. Of all the Paula Brancatis in the world, you're the Paula Brancatiest. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so I have to say that I I've been reading the insider since before i even auditioned for degrassi you are kidding me yeah no not even lying i wasn't gonna say anything and my friend's like please don't say that you'll sound like the biggest dork i'm like no i have to i have to oh my god oh wow you just made our day yeah man no i'm not even lying so uh that's pretty it's pretty exciting for me Oh my wow, god! Wow, that's great because every time, usually when we talk to people, they're like, uh, "Who are these weirdos?" <laughs> no, I'm sure and... they've read it too, and they're just kind of they're trying to seem cool and collected. I choose not to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> I think the only ones who have admitted it are like Aubrey and Stacy and Lauren. Fair enough. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, I could see them admitting it. Very yeah, cool. Totally. Now, have, were you reading it because you know you're sort of a you're a long time member of the Anne family from the Radio Free Roscoe days? That's right. You know what? That's probably that had something to do with it. Definitely. I know. I played played Veronica. Right. A couple of episodes, the annoying girlfriend. So yeah, I think that's kind of that's kind of why, and probably like because I had I knew people on Degrassi and RFR because um, Canadian actors all kind of have worked with each other. Yeah, there's like the Canadian past. child actor mafia. We've learned this is yeah. This I guess this is what we what we call it. Sure. Um, yeah, so we're all kind of friends. So I think you know everyone kind of looks up their friend shows, um, right, and right. that's kind of how I stumbled across it. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, how has it been? Like, what have you done between Radio Free Roscoe and Degrassi? Is it... I've worked, I worked quite a bit between Radio Free Roscoe um, and Degrassi. I did um, two seasons of my own series. It was on um, YTV. Oh, awesome. And, yeah, it was, it was a really great experience for me. That was my first lead on a series and just did a couple of Disney Channel uh, movies of the week and a couple of guest spots. You know, it was, it was good. I was in high school, so I got yeah. the best of both worlds, being okay. away, going back. So. Is Jane sort of like a typical character for you? Like, do you get? No, not at all. Actually, I was always, I was always kind of the girl next door. And then when I did these, I don't know if you've seen like Disney Channel stuff, but there's usually the, the very one-dimensional good girl and one-dimensional mean girl, and uh-huh. I played the mean girl in both. So that was kind of my experience with <laughs> branching out. And then Jane was just kind of like a good. My first sort of like in terms of her look, like I got to dress a little more extreme and heavier makeup and her attitude is awesome she's a very cool character to play i know I we're say. we're pretty big fans of jane over here are you guys jane fans yeah yeah totally like i'm hoping like do we get a lot more jane as, as time there is on? definitely yeah there's some good stuff coming up for her you're gonna kind of you're gonna see a little bit of her of her uh her family life and oh, good. some other friendships that develop I guess I can say, yeah, there's some some good stuff coming up. It's exciting. I have to admit, like, as I was watching this episode, I was getting so nervous that Spinner and Jane were going to break up. (laughs) They weren't even together. (laughs) When I was reading it, I'm like, come on, come on. (laughs) And then when it said the kiss at the end, we look at each other, we're like, okay, okay. Um, I haven't even seen the episode. Was it it good? Did you guys like it? Yeah, yeah. It was the the one where uh, Spinner's going through chemo. Oh, no. Yeah, I know the one. We don't get to see it. I didn't even know what you guys were talking about. I was just <laughs> hoping. <laughs> no, I just I don't get to see them because Canada's a little behind, right? Oh, okay. So we're, we're not up to up to speed, so. Hopefully. I'll have you know that we take great pride in that too, because it used to be in the fact that you guys are ahead. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Everybody was spoiling the episodes for us. I was like, oh, come on. Already. <laughs> well, how soon before do you guys get to see them? Like, you guys watched it months before. Is this we get. The DVDs like you, early. I think. Mary and Seth, I mean. Yeah, like Seth watches them pretty early. We, definitely months before. Like I have to wait until the week of, or else I will spoil everything because I'm a moron. Oh, it's a choice. It's like a <laughs> yeah. personal choice of yours. Okay, totally. I don't, I respect this. It's great. And I will Fair. actually. I'll say this because I don't think a lot of fans know this, but we actually get to see the the rough cuts usually. Yeah. Oh, and, do you really? And then sometimes we forget to watch the final <laughs> version before we <laughs> record these podcasts. <laughs> Like yeah, and then we go off on these scenes that aren't even in there, and it's like, oh. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awkward. 
like, what do you mean that was cut? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, Got it. Cool. So wait, so are you in real life more Jane like or more mean girl next door like? Oh, or... def- <laughs> not mean girl next door. Um, that's a bit of a stretch stretch for me. <laughs> I hope I hope I'm coming off uh, not like a yeah, mean girl no. next door. But uh, no, in terms of Jane, I think you know I think a lot of actors always bring a lot of themselves uh, to characters they play. I know there's actors who think they don't bring anything. I think there's you know certain choices you make are definitely a lot about you and what you've experienced. Um, I mean, in terms of fashion and like look, I'm not, I'm not so Janie, but personality, I'm, I'm maybe not as blunt as her, but I'd like to think we're both pretty, you know, pretty confident. And I've sort of, you know, the way that she's, she's kind of gone to spinner in this episode. I really like that. She was like, look, do you like me or not? What's <laughs> yeah, the yeah. deal? You know, every girl kind of has that moment. And in the past, I may not have been so inclined to do that, but, but lately, like in the last few months, I've been more, more a take charge, you know, take charge of, of the future in terms of uh, goals and, and even love and just kind of, you know, put it out on the table. So. Oh, interesting. Do you feel yeah. like you kind of picked that up from Jane? or? You, it's funny because I'll tell, like, my, my one of my best friends just about the storylines, and she's like, that's really cool. We should really try that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> She's a cool girl. <laughs> maybe, maybe kind of subconsciously. I think it's, you know, it's also an eight month span that we film over. Yeah. So yeah. I can see the change, um, like throughout the character and, you know, you change within eight months too. So yeah, yeah. probably yeah. a combo. Totally. But, but is the nose ring real? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> do you buy it? I don't know. <laughs> I buy it for the character. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not. Although sometimes I'll forget that it's on, and I would walk out of work with it on. So <laughs> kind of, I got used to it. Um, I wonder if I should bring this up, but there's actually in the first two episodes we have it on one side, and in episode five and six it changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has both ears, but she just picks which. Stage. That's what they said. That's what they said. I don't know. It seemed a little bizarre, but just putting that out there. Wait, was there like a reason that they changed it, or was it a the mistake? reason? It's such a weird, a bizarre reason. I I don't know. I think maybe there's more to it. I just know that when we were rehearsing the week before filming five and six, there's that pool hall scene, you know, where we're kind of at the corner and Jane says to Spinner, like, do you like my nose ring? Yeah, yeah. Kind of leaned. Apparently I leaned a certain way and they liked this camera, like putting the camera at that angle. So they said the easiest (laughs) thing would be rather than changing the camera, changing the nose ring. (laughs) So I wasn't in much of one and two. So perhaps this is why they thought it would be fine. They're just like, oh, no, 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 no. I I, I feel stupid for not... For not knowing this, but how do you how do you fake a nose ring? How do you oh the ones we used for the first four episodes it was a an earring actually, um so that that was a little painful like we just kind of squeezed it and <laughs> basically oh you just clipped oh I see okay we just sort of like yeah just kind of squeezed it and then later like in this in Pasta Duchy we have a smaller one because I was just we were sort of discussing with wardrobe and maybe it's a little large so we got one that's you know that has the little balls on each end so that it's sort of. Oh, okay. Cushions. Yeah, area, yeah. If you will. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little more comfortable. Cushioning the Find some nose ring. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best way I could think to explain it. But. I would guess, like, wait, can you be a working actor and get a piercing? Like, I would imagine that would complicate things. I do know actors who, who have done it. Um, I, well, Shane has piercings. Shane does have piercings. He does have piercings, but he, um, he uses them, I guess, for spinner. Like, they, like, they, like, that for his look mm-hmm. um and i know shanae has like a piercing on her ear which may or may not work for darcy but they're you know they're cool with it like i think it depends on what you discuss with production but i have a friend who had like a nose ring but for the character it didn't work at all so they had to cover it up uh for him every day you could oh, kind yeah. of see on close-ups but I don't, I don't know it depends how close fans look i guess right yeah. right you know, you know, we're we're talking way too much about the nose ring, but I need to ask you this too. Is it like is it like when Harrison Ford puts on the Indiana Jones head and suddenly he's like, okay, I, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. When you pl- clip on the nose ring, you're like, okay, now I'm Jane. That is so funny because in a small way, it's so true. Like when the nose ring, when we do, because it's the last thing that goes on. So when we put on all the makeup, we, I'm like, something's missing. Wait, like it has to be. Yeah, when I put it on, it, it's so, it's a little embarrassing to say that, but yeah. It does something just clicks into place. I the Indiana Jones analogy is, is kind of bang on, so <laughs> thank awesome. you, Seth. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, um, let's let's get to know Paula Brancati more. Um, what kind of okay. music are you into? What kind of music? Right now, I am. I've been listening to John Mayer's Continuum uh, on repeat. Ah, yeah. As well as Headley. Do you guys know Headley? No. The Canadian band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Headley. Um, but I'm a huge like Billy Joel fan. Um, Led Zeppelin. Wait, I'm tell sort us of about Headley. Class. Tell us about Headley. Okay. Um, Headley is the front runner, like the main singer, was on Canadian Idol. Oh, okay. Back. Yeah. And he was sort of like the edgy one, um, didn't really fit into the Canadian Idol mold. Um, and then he made it really, really big, I guess, in Canada in particular, um, with their first CD. But I'm just l- listening to their second quite a bit. Um, and there's just a lot of, like, you know, rock. The lyrics are really nice. I'm a lyric kind of girl. Uh-huh. I don't know about, about you guys. Um, so I just, I don't know, if you can look up Old School, love that song. It's great. Okay. Growing up. Um, yeah, there's some nice ones. But I mean, that's sort of the current, the most current band that I've been listening to. Um, I Like one of these, like if someone tells me a random song, I'll just, like my list is just a bunch of, a mishmash, of just one song from yeah. one artist. Um, except if it's like Billy Joel or Bon Jovi. <laughs> Okay. I was going to say, like, Billy Joel and Led Zeppelin, like, that's an interesting concept. I know. <laughs> it's, it's such a bizarre. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm very eclectic in my taste. That's when you know somebody's being honest about what they like, because <laughs> yeah, really. nobody likes just one kind of music, you know? No, exactly. And, I mean, my dad used to, he's obsessed with Elvis, so we would listen to Elvis growing up. Awesome. Um, so that was one of my big, like, musical inspirations. Um, what kind of stuff do you do for fun? Like, what are you doing this weekend? On the weekend, just, I mean, this last weekend I had three birthdays in a row of three very different groups of friends, which was very fun. Um, It's getting to see everyone. But this week I'm on reading week, actually. Um, So I'm just sort of, I went out like the first half, and now I kind of have to buckle down and study for my exam. Oh, okay. That I have next week, unfortunately. But but that's the way it goes. Um, Yeah, just like I, I take music lessons. I'm just sort of doing that and hang out with friends. Sam, I'm always with my family, my grandparents. What kind of music lessons? I take um, piano. I've been doing piano since I was eight or nine, I guess, mm-hmm. um, and vocal. Vocal. We kind of, dip, like, my vocal sort of varies. Like, we'll do, if I'm auditioning for a musical, then we'll focus on Broadway, or then we'll do classical, or sort of all over the place, which is nice. Right, right. And what are you, what are you studying? In school, I'm taking um, a few courses at a university in Toronto, and um, I'm doing film right now and writing. Um, it was tricky because I was missing a lot of school first semester. I was working on Degrassi and a couple of other a couple of other things, um, so it just kind of all came at once. That's usually how it happens, so I wasn't really there. But the last month or so, I've been to every single lecture, so I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> and uh, it's been it's been good. It's it, they're interesting courses, you know. I I want to juggle it with acting. That was sort of my my goal when choosing the school that I was going to go to. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. So it's worked out okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been super awesome talking to you today, Paula Brancati. I'm very glad I finally got to speak to you guys. We're glad too. Um, yes. Have an awesome day and an awesome weekend. And thank you, you guys too. Hopefully, we will meet someday. Yes, I hope so. Yes. At some point, and uh, and I'll keep I'll keep reading. I'll keep reading the answer. <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks, have guys. A good one. Thanks, Paula. Bye. 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 Wow. She Paula Brancati loves that. She, well, I don't want to like go too far, but she read The Insider. Yeah. That's like the most exciting thing that's happened to me today. She's the one who's been reading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's the one. Oh, man. That is like, I'm serious. Like that kind of gives me the warm fuzzies. It does. Me too. Because you know what? I, I was, you know, sort of kidding about saying that everyone thinks it's just a bunch of weirdos when they call them. But the truth is, I never meet anyone on the podcast or otherwise that has actually read the entire. <laughs> Except when I go, we go to things like the Ultimate Degrassi Party, where you know it's 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 like we've we've cultivated people <laughs> to read the entire and put them all in a room together. Right, it's right. It's not like I ever meet anyone in person and they say, "Oh yeah, I read that." Yeah, that's true. And that here we go, Paula Brancati. Paul Brancardi with the badass last name knows who we are, and that's good enough for me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Go save the world. Oh, yeah, right. I should get back to that. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, you should get back to that, Seth. Come on. <laughs> Quit slacking off. All right. I'll do it. Fine. <laughs> I will uh, talk to you next week. All right. See you, Mary. Bye. Okay. Bye.